My name is John Downs, uh, and uh, uh, I was a resident at Bergen College from 1972 to 1974, uh, when I was a resident tutor and uh, council member. Uh, and uh, I understand that I'm the recipient uh, this year, 2022, of the Bergman Distinguished Alumni Award, and uh, I'm very proud of that. My career has been a bit varied, uh, but you might broadly say that I've had a career in diplomacy. Uh, and uh, I guess that, the, you know, what is diplomacy? It's a bit hard to define in, in short order, but uh, uh, as I think uh, Winston Churchill once said, you know, jaw jaw is much better than war war. And I think that there are many uh, ways in which uh, uh, nations talking to each other can advance uh, the interests of uh, humanity in general. and. Uh, limit the risks of disaster. You know, I, I've got an example uh, which is not actually an example about a diplomat, but uh, about a man called Sir Peter Cosgrove. You probably know Peter, he was Governor General, but he was also the commander of the uh, UN mandated interfet uh, forces uh, that uh, went in to restore order in East Timor at the time when East Timor became, uh, became independent. I was the, uh, the head of the government's uh, task force on East Timor in 1999 and uh, before Peter landed with his uh, very significant armed forces uh, he went uh, ashore the night before the landing uh, alone uh, or accompanied by a staff officer on shore but and met with the commander of the Indonesian armed forces and talked to him and agreed that it didn't make sense for the next day for there to be fighting that this was something that was very possible to uh, to uh, conclude, to restore order in East Timor in a peaceful sort of way. So, I mean, I think that uh, that's not an example from what you'd call strictly diplomacy, but it is the sort of business I was about uh, for 45 years. I've done a bunch of other things as well, in and out of the Foreign Service, but uh, it uh, it's diplomacy that I was about, and I'm proud of that. Well, Bergman College is in my blood. Um, uh, you know, I think you're probably going to ask me a bit more about that a bit later, but uh, my attendance at Bergman, which was pretty largely accidental, like lots, lots of other things in my life, uh, restored my life. I'd, I'd had a particularly difficult time uh, in the few years before. Bergman, as I say, is in my blood. Uh, and uh, so recognition of this sort from uh, a place uh, that means uh, so much to me uh, is, uh, is very important to me personally. What did I study at Bergman? Well, I didn't actually study a lot, uh, to be truthful. I, I went there as a resident tutor. Uh, and uh, so I gave tutorials, mostly to first year students uh, uh, in history. I was the history tutor. Uh, though the truth is, I mostly gave uh, tutorials in drinking gin, uh, and uh, the kids would come around on a, <laughs> at the weekend and uh, we'd have a drink. But uh, I also found that, you know, young uh, kids, uh, 18 year olds, uh, uh, were uh, needed a lot of guidance and some very basic stuff. So you'd help them write uh, assignments uh, uh, where it was a simple matter of telling them about you know, having an introduction, a middle and a conclusion. Uh, so uh, that was the sort of uh, basic tutorial uh, that I gave them. But I also did quite a lot of other things. I coached the rugby team, I, I captained the squash team. I, I, uh, I was a council member for many years, both when I was living there and uh, a number of times afterwards. And once in the 80s, when Graham Garrett uh, was ill and couldn't take up the appointment, uh, of, uh, of uh, principal of the, of the college I uh, filled in for a number of months as acting principal. So I've had an association with the college over many years and, and in many different roles and enjoyed them all. Bergman's contributed to my life in a very fundamental way. As I was saying earlier, 
Uh, I'd had a, a difficult uh, few years before Berkman. Uh, my parents had uh, died suddenly uh, and and then I joined the Foreign Service and gone off to my first post in Nigeria and it was a very unhappy post for all sorts of reasons, not least because I was still uh, putting my life together. <clears throat> and I came back from um, came back from Nigeria and uh, was looking for somewhere to stay <clears throat> and uh, accidentally uh, found that uh, Bergman needed a, a tutor, which I did part time while I continued to work at the Department of the then Department of External Affairs. Uh, and uh, it really helped me recover my life. Uh, it helped me put my life back together to find direction, to find uh, inspiration, to find a bit of joy. Uh, and uh, so those two years were really very important to me. The, the, the fraternity which I found in college, the, uh, the, the wonderful spirit that we forged in the early days at Bergman, the spirit which persists, those, uh, those uh, strands of experience among uh, undergraduates and graduates, that's still there. And that was very important to me then, and it stayed with me all of my life. My fondest memory of uh, Bergman is not a single memory. It's a, it's a blur of things, lots of things. Uh, uh, and being there at the start, I wasn't there in the first year of Bergman, but I was there in the second and third and fourth. Uh, and we were we were setting down markers, not very consciously, but which uh, have endured in what I think is one of the best collegiate environments in Australia. You know, and uh, things things got done. We we uh, Lou Rushbrook uh, um, established Luigi's, and Luigi's is still still there. Uh, St Beryl uh, was uh, very much uh, part of our lives. So. Uh, and also we established some very key principles about the place and a strongly egalitarian spirit, uh, which I think uh, persists and defines the community. So I don't have a single memory. I have, I have lots of memories uh, of a very happy time with, uh, with a lot of very good friends, some of whom aren't with us. One of the principal drivers of, uh, of the spirit of Bergman in those days was a man called Jim Douglas and Jim just died a few weeks ago and uh, that uh, that's very sad but we uh, uh, we did a lot of things together and I have very happy memories of all of the residents well you know I've in my life uh, given quite a lot of uh, for various reasons I've given lots of graduation addresses and I always say the same thing really I say to young, purposeful, uh, ambitious uh, uh, undergraduates and graduates. Well, you know, uh, what you're doing is absolutely right. You know, thinking about uh, the future, what you need to do, planning, uh, all that's terrific. Uh, do as much of that as you can. But just remember that life's not like that. That actually things will come along in an entirely accidental way or things you don't expect. And I would say, that you should seize the opportunities that arise that come along. You know, I've spent far too much, far too much time in my life agonising about decisions which were obvious. Should I or should I not go off to be press secretary to the Queen at Buckingham Palace? Should I or should I not go and be uh, chief of staff to the foreign minister? Uh, and, you know, times I spent, you know, sleepless nights worrying about things. For God's sake, of course you should do things. When opportunities arise, seize them with both hands.